Here I've got wash in the spare cage and you have to put the rat into the cage with no bedding at all so that you can actually collect a urine sample. Now I always give a bowl of water when I'm or a hanging bottle of water while the rat's in the cage. It's important that they have a drink. A good time is when they very first wake up and um, they, they usually have go and have a drink and you can pop them straight in the cage. You've been a good boy. Been a very good boy, haven't you? Yes, I need to collect your urine sample. Don't step in it, darling. That's it. Now, Wash has done a lovely puddle at the back, so I've got my syringe, and on the back of the syringe packet, there's an expiry date. So, if you're needing sterile syringes for collecting samples or doing medicines, then check the expiry date on the back of the packet. And I've also got the little collection pot. So what we do is, as soon as we see that the rat has done the urine sample, we'll get our syringe. It does take, a, if you have bigger syringes for collecting urine, that's really good. So to collect the sample, you have to hold the syringe vertically and flat to the base of the cage and gradually work your way around the puddle. Now it takes a few goes to do this. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I'm collecting your wee. There we go. Now, it's a bit time consuming, isn't it? But, I mean, with Pippin, when he does his wee, his tummy's so fat, he drags it all over the ground, and we're collecting one tiny drop after another. I'll show you in a minute how much I've collected. Hey, <laughs> good boy. Good boy, down you go. Now, you have to hold the syringe, actually, sort of... It has to be vertically to collect the urine. It's a bit time consuming, you get air bubbles and so keep going. We need more than that, don't we? I'm gonna get you out in one minute, little man. <laughs> I know, I know, you want to come out. I'm not doing very well collecting this sample, so it's quite time consuming there. We have where is it? only collected that much already and we've had four goes so anyway that's we've got enough to do what we want now if I collected the rest of it we can probably get up up to about here sorry you can't see that if, if I collect the rest of it we'd get up to about here um, now that is enough for a vet to do a sample obviously unlike humans you're not going to be able to fill the pot so that is enough to do the sample so we'll just see if we can get one more little bit here. Yes. Oh, it's difficult, isn't it? It's very difficult to collect it. Well, we've got a little bit in there. So then what we do is we get our urine testing strip from our pack. Hey, good boy. He wants to come out, don't you? Yes, make sure you've got clean, dry hands when you do all of this. If you have any cuts on your hands, then I would use um, a disposable gloves. Now there's two ways you can do this. If you need the sample for the vet, you need to fill the pot with the urine and then you can simply put the stick into the pot on its side and run the urine across the, st or across the little stick and uh, dip it in that way. If you don't need to collect a sample for the vet, and you're just doing it for yourself, you can actually just run the stick through the urine and make sure all the little, little uh, squares have been covered with urine. Then keep that horizontal and time it for exactly 60 seconds, uh, which I've got my clock behind me, which you can't see. And we're going to see if there's any change at all on the little squares and I can see immediately there is still sugar there um, which is not too good just keep an eye on the clock there it hasn't gone as dark as it did the other day his density it looks like he's a little bit dehydrated because of his density just keep an eye on that so yeah so if you're taking the little pot to the vet have a little plastic bag that you can seal it up in and then you put your put your rat's name and your name and contact details on the side of the pot just as if you were collecting a urine sample for yourself and let me just have a look we're nearly coming up 
for the 60 seconds. So now we don't leave it any longer than that. When you've got your 60 seconds, you put your strip against the bottle. So it would help if we had it around the right way. And you can see the difference if there's been any change. Um, now immediately we can see that the sugar at the bottom has changed from green, the glucose has gone to brown, so he still has very high sugar. His urine is a little bit strong, so we need to watch out for that. He's actually done another urine sample there, which is, is good. But he has no blood and he has no protein, um, nothing else there. Um, oh, it shows actually his white blood cells at the top that there is a few white blood cells in so that is something um oh, and a little touch of of protein so he possibly has got a bit of an infection or we are going to have to report that back to our vet now so that's not good um his urine sample is worse than it was before so what i'm going to do is collect the rest of that urine and um, in a minute and i'm going to put that into the pot to take to the vet now the, the other thing we would do for, for a wash now is we will get him into his little bowl of water and give him a little rinse and put him back into his cage. But before we do that, I'll just show you, we have the coconut treats um, and he, he will have a little treat when he's gone back in. There's no sugar or carbohydrate in these. And they come in a little, they're vacuum packed and there is a silica gel in there, make sure that your rat doesn't get the silica gel and we break off a little piece of this coconut treat to give wash and um, always make sure that you squeeze the air out of the packs and reseal them and I say always have clean hands whenever you're doing anything like this and when you have um, collected the sample and you've finished everything just remember to wash your hands again just just to keep everything nice and clean now I'm going to move the camera and we're going to get our bowl of water and we'll see if we can get washed out. And we have our little bowl of water here ready to give him a little dip in. So come on little man, that's it, good boy. Because they always dip their tails into the water. So we will very carefully just dip him in underneath lukewarm water there and get his tail in the water. And then, good boy, have a towel ready. And you can pop him out onto your knee. Uh, now don't walk, don't walk the water all over me, little man. Let's just wrap you up. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but what I'm doing is just wrapping him up in a towel, giving him a little cuddle, and um, that is worrying that there's a, it's a few white blood cells and a little, little bit of protein in there. Now that might be because of the high protein diet, um, and we're having to keep an eye on wash his kidneys. And it could be because he has a touch of an infection, because obviously people with diabetes and diabetic animals are more prone to infections. So I'm in constant contact with the vet, so I'm going to go and report back to him that we found a little touch of, um, of protein and white blood cells. Um, it may be that we can start him on the insulin tablets straight away rather than wait until next week, because obviously we don't want to risk him getting any kidney damage. So... You know, that's just, I think that was all I wanted to show you on this one. It's basically how to collect your urine sample. And um, yeah, if you have a diabetic rat, good luck. And I'd love to hear how you're getting on.